I think that boundaries are so good because we have a hard time with accepting that we are limited people, right? But I mean, it is true. We only have a certain amount of time. Um, certain amount of energy. Amount of energy. You know. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome to the Alinus Podcast, a transformative journey into the worlds of wellness and philanthropy. I'm your host, Dr. Nikhil Sharma, and I'm so grateful to have you guys here with us today. Each week, we'll be hearing conversations with those whose works are at the crossroads of wellness, philanthropy, and transformation. You'll be hearing inspiring stories to help empower you on your own personal growth journey and help you make a positive impact on the world. All right, let's get this podcast started. Uh, today, we have a great, interesting topic called Boundaries, and we have a special guest with us today. Morgan Hancock, who is a therapist in Los Gatos, California, who works with anxious women and athletes who tend to label themselves as high achievers and people pleasers. Welcome to the Alliance Podcast, Morgan. We're really, really grateful to have you here with us today. Thanks. Yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. You know, before we get started with our podcast today, can you just give us a little bit about your background and how you got to taking care of these high achievers and people pleasers? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm um, in Las Gatos. Um, I've uh, worked in private practice for for a few years, um, and um, yeah, we I just moved in um, January here. Um, at Havenly Counseling Collective. Um, and I tend to work with um, women and athletes. Um, and um, I, I think I really got involved in it, um, just seeing more athletes in my practice um, and uh, having anxiety myself and being an athlete myself. I feel like I can kind of help women through some of the issues that I've gone through. Um, and so I, I really do have a heart, um, because, um, especially with high achievers, they don't, um, they don't tend to ask for help. Um, and so, um, I think that when I, when I'm in this space, you know, it's really special to be able to work with them, um, and, and see them, um, try to, try to grow in that. And, um, yeah, so one of the things that we talk about a lot is boundaries. Um, right. Yeah. Awesome. You know, I, I certainly resonate with this topic. I find myself to be a high achiever and um, had many uh, growing pains uh, with that label, I would say, throughout my life. Uh, I also found myself people pleasing, you know, a little bit, but I certainly resonate much more with the high achievers and really looking forward to kind of delving into, you know, how that uh, came about and what, you know, different strategies people can use to help empower themselves to actually, you know, set boundaries and liberate themselves uh, to lead a more fulfilling life. So again, very, very grateful to have you with us here today. So, you know, this boundaries topic has become very, very hot. You know, a lot of uh, news around it, pop culture, people are talking about it. Um, what's a good definition of setting healthy boundaries? Yeah, I I think practically a boundary is a limit. Um, if you're responsible for yourself and your sphere, um, your own life, um, taking care of yourself, um, then there's there's like a limit um, between you and another person, um, just limits on how much you can give, um, how much you're responsible for um, within that relationship. Um, and so, yeah, setting a boundary can be as simple as just saying no to things. Um, um, it could also be making different decisions about your life based on your priorities and, you know, thinking of yourself ins inside that sphere again. It's like, okay, what are my priorities? Where where do I need to spend my time right now? And so, yeah, boundaries can say, okay, I'm not going to accept this. Um, but yeah, I like to think of them as limits. 
Right. But it's not like limits in a restrictive manner where people feel like boundaries, like somehow inhibit your life. Right. It, it, boundaries are actually set in, so that it can free you up to do the things that you, you most you feel emotionally fulfilled, you know, to pursue. Right. It's 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 not like boundaries. Hey, um, I need to sit at home and boundary myself from every human being and become so isolated. Right. Um, it's understanding yeah. that we have a house with like a fence. Right. And, you mm -hmm. know, right. we're going to coordinate mm -hmm. with other people around us. Uh, but in order to uh, harmoniously uh, and efficiently lead our lives, uh, we must respect uh, and understand what our boundaries are. And those that are in our tribe uh, must also do the same. Yeah, a lot of people have a hard time. And I think that boundaries are so good because we have a hard time with accepting that we are limited people, right? That we think that it's really bad. Um, but I mean, it is true. We only have a certain amount of time. Um, certain amount of energy. Amount of energy. You know? Yeah. Um, and so um, there, there can be shame about that because we want to be limitless and be able to give to everyone and have, you know, make a, a ton of sacrifices um, for people um, based on, you know, our upbringing. I think um, we want to be that, but um, we can't. You know, You're right. and, and, yeah. and, I, and we we often learn the hard way that we can't. And what happens is, is that our energy is so valuable, but oftentimes we are overextending ourselves. We are doing things for every single other human being around us except ourselves, you know, and, uh, um, you know, if when that occurs, uh, we tend to crash and burn. Um, and our, um, you know, mental health, uh, you know, waxes and wanes, you know, because uh, energy is very valuable. Uh, and we need to be more mindful of how we are using that energy and who is uh, navigating into your zone, I would say, you know, and when you have the a power and the empowerment to be able to uh, choose um, who you give your energy to and how much, and you are most importantly vocal about it uh, because oftentimes we aren't. We're afraid that we think it's confrontational to let people know, hey, you're crossing our boundaries. But if you have that conversation about how you like to be communicated or how you like your relationships to go, that takes away a lot of resentment that likely can build up um, because of one person giving you know, either unrequited love or too much in a relationship with the other ones not giving enough right so um it's about understanding that and spending time with those people that give a good back and forth and understand what you need and, and you understand what they need uh in order to live efficiently and harmoniously yeah yeah and something that you said there was like you know our energy is valuable um and, and it is a sacrifice when we give to people, you know, or, and, but with people that I work with, um, they don't know it's a sacrifice, you know, people pleasers aren't thinking in that way. It's like, you know, my time is just free, you know, and like, um, I have, all this energy. I don't even think I, I'm limited in that, you know? So it's not actually like registering that this is even a sacrifice. And so, um, yeah, I would it's say for anyone, for anyone listening, you know, um, that it, it is kind of hard to, to see that, that there are actually sacrifices being made that you may not even have to make, you know? Um, yeah. So, you know, I love this two types of people here. So we have these high achievers, which I know mm -hmm. a lot of people can resonate, and then these people pleasers. But how do we get to becoming a high achiever? How do we get to becoming a people pleaser? Like what has happened typically in those individuals' lives? You know, usually a lot of this occurs at a young age. You know, it's something that either our parents have 
uh, taught us or not taught us, but have, well, maybe taught us, especially if you're a people pleaser, you know, that, you know, maybe you hear from your mom or dad that, hey, you should always say yes to everybody, you know, it's always good to help everyone else, right? Or, uh, you know, for high achievers, it, you know, sometimes, you know, they're getting trained by their parents that this is a, a type of lifestyle you need to achieve and maintain and you have to work really, really hard to get that. So a lot, a lot of these, uh, a, lot, a lot of times this occurs at a young age. So do you mind just talking to us a little bit about the, the background and the upbringing of each type, a high achiever and a people pleaser? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so I think develop, developmentally, we're looking at, we start out um, as, you know, one with our mom, right? And um, and it's draining those first two months. Mom is just like, and dad are giving everything um, to the baby, right? And that's mm -hmm. very like, you're responsible for me, you know, and right, like right. taking care, I can trust you, you're going to come feed me and take care of me, like that sort of thing. Um, and then there's this process of the parent slowly letting go of their responsibilities as the child grows up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um so that you know the it can they can have more of an adult relationship later on um they're both be able to be very independent um but still have that connection um what happens is there's a disruption in that process does that make sense or am i saying that no clearly? no you are that makes sense yeah yeah and so in that process like some some examples that i see are um like the child will take on the shame of the parent like we need to make the family name great um i need to make mom or dad look good and so i'm gonna achieve a lot and so that's like a a, re a role reversal and responsibility that this child is saying like okay that my parent needs this from me and they're they're going to make me they're going to be happy with me if I do this you know because we're so intuitive um to to our parents and I mean it depends on the temperament of the child you know but yeah. um so yeah sometimes that will happen or you know it can sometimes like kids are really smart and they can just like flatter their parents and so that's like a way of people pleasing um uh and then I, of course their you know their parent loves them more and like it lights them up and um or they take care of their needs in a, in a certain way um and so we get this and we're like this totally works you know like the teacher's pet or something like um if if i'm a really good student you're gonna like me more um those sorts of things so so we can kind of develop these patterns of if i sacrifice in this way like things really work out for me um and that's how we can kind of like control um other people you know like no it makes I sense. get that. Yeah. It makes total sense because, you know, growing up, I was thinking the way that um, I'm an old child. However, growing up, I remember, you know, my parents, um, you know, they had to work very, very hard in their life. Uh, we lived paycheck to paycheck. And I remember like a lot of times my mom would have to come home from a long days of work and just seeing like the struggle that they were going through. And, you know, they didn't have my Sure, my dad's an engineer. My mom is, uh, you know, worked at a bank. However, again, a paycheck to paycheck. But the struggle that I saw, and then you know, wanting to make them happy and proud of me, because I wanted to provide them a life that was free of that struggle. You know, it was free of this paycheck to paycheck, you know, life that they were currently undergoing. Uh, to, hey, I'm going to provide them abundance the way I have been taught. And it's like for us and South Asians, you know, you need to become a doctor or some sort of professional and I'm going to go become the best one possible. So I'm going to really dive into that because every time I do well, I'm seeing that my parents are uh, 
getting excited. They're like, yeah, yeah. so proud. Mm-hmm. Right. Like that's right. how it, 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 it forms at a very young age and continues yeah. on all the way until I graduated medical school. And at times, you know, the habits that I created to make that happen were extremely, you know, not uh, good. I would say I would have very unhealthy habits, but it was you do the things that you know how to do to try to make, you know, in this case, my parents proud of me because that's what made me feel good inside right yeah and so there's it, there's these really sweet stories you know we're right. just like um yeah as as kids we care so much and we're so attached and we just want our parents to be happy and um this is kind of yeah how we learn how we learn these yeah. patterns is there yeah. some advice that you would give to parents right now who have younger kids, right, that are, you know, listening? And how would you guide them on maybe preventing this, uh, them to, or from them to turn out to such super high achievers? Because, you know, or super people pleasers, right. because, right? there is a point where you want to achieve like that's the whole goal in life is to achieve mm-hmm. right and, and it's like uh there's nothing at all wrong with becoming a, a a ceo of course we need them we need sports athletes and we need them to be performing at a very very high level you know at, at times and we'll go into like the individual but is there anything you could give to the advice to the parents about like who have younger kids now to me how they could you know better guide their kids prevent this yeah. right yeah and um sometimes um i don't know if i can say all the time so i'm gonna say sometimes uh-huh. um the parents will be the same way you know of like i want to be a really good parent and so i'm going to take care of my kid um and do a lot of things for them um and so i have this one story um of how my dad actually did this for me. Um, I was in third grade and I forgot my homework at school. So I told him and then he's like, okay, I'll just, you know, I'll drive you back to school and um, yeah, and we'll get your homework. Um, I learned the custodian's name because it actually happened three times. Um, And Um, and so I didn't like, I obviously didn't learn my lesson the first time, didn't learn it the second time. And my dad was just taking on that responsibility for me when I like, as a third grader should have been able to remember, you know, or just like taking the consequences. Um, and, um, so it, it is really difficult because, and I mean, I, I don't, um, I don't blame parents because that it's really difficult. I don't know if my dad did the right thing. You know what I mean? But at least in that moment, I wasn't learning my lesson. And it actually wasn't until my teacher was like jokingly like stapled um, my homework. She didn't actually staple it, but she was like acting like she was um, that I like got the point. I'm like, okay, I need to remember, you know? Um, And so, yeah. So it's, it's a fine line of being supportive and helping your, um, your kids through their struggles and what they're going to and giving them the help that they need, and then also not taking it on for them. Um, and it, it matters expectations, um, around age and maturity too. Um, so I think just constantly like checking in, like, what should we be expecting from our kids and what am I putting on them, um, that I should, you know, be putting on, you know, friends or, or other people or just accepting responsibility for myself. Right. So I love that. Okay. Being a parent is hard. It's yeah. not, yeah, I know, man. Yeah. Life, life is hard. I, I think people yeah. uh, need to uh, really understand that. 
is that there's challenges all along the way. That's what life is. I feel like you wouldn't really be here if uh, everything was going to end up being perfect in your life. And so I, once that fa fallacy is kind of removed from your brain or mindset, you're able to attack life a little bit better because you know that there's going to be ups and downs. You know that you're not going to be able to raise your kids uh, to any perfect level because they'll have their own. We cannot control the outcomes of uh, their behaviors uh, because of their interactions and so on and so forth. But all we can do is be balanced, I feel, in a way uh, to try to you know, guide them as best as we can. And that's all you can really do uh, with all the knowledge that you're able to uh, gain and then impart on them. Hey guys, for more resources on boundaries, including our blog, which has more insight on today's topic, make sure you check out our website at www.alinusworld.com. Make sure to also follow us on our social media pages on TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, with the handle at Alinus World. And to energetically donate to our YouTube channel, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Now back to our podcast. So you kind of coming back to the these high achievers and then the people pleasers. Um, so high achievers, you know, these are those, you know, athletes. Uh, these are those, uh, you know, 4.5, 5.0 GPA students. I'm not sure what the GPA is these days because the highest we ever had was 4.0. Uh, but I, I'm seeing some astronomical scores these days. But, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, they're the they're the ones who end up becoming, you know, valedictorians. They're they are in every single activity, uh, you know, group that you can possibly be in, in high school, college, uh, you know, making sure that they're always at the top of whatever profession that they're in, you know, and whether that's driven by their parents, sometimes, you know, in my case, my parents wanted me to be a doctor so bad, it's as if they had put that in my head at a very young age. And I, you know, every time I got good grades, I got all this reinforcement. But it was also like, when I didn't get good grades, I would get, you know, belittled, you know, and so I, in a way, I started taking that um my grades and their love kind of coexisted together right and so it helped me it helped me but it made me drive home that i need to get good grades i need to achieve at a high level so you know uh, how can you know over time sorry over time though this aspect of me i began to develop a lot of resentment you know towards my parents because it's like I couldn't talk about any of my emotional needs. It was, everything was like academics and things became very unhealthy and I had unhealthy patterns. And oftentimes I know athletes and, you know, again, CEOs, they also develop unhealthy patterns of leadership and working so hard. Um, how can, how can we establish these boundaries, especially with like people that we love? Right. The people like our coaches, like our family, our parents, you know, high achievers, you know, have to struggle with a lot because, you know, some of it's coming internally, their drive, but a lot of it's also coming externally, you know. So it's it, it's very complicated. But how would you help these individuals lead a more balanced life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're not talking about the CEO who is so fulfilled. You know, they're like, I put in the work and I get the results I want and I'm getting my needs met. And this is so great. You know, um, it's usually, yeah, people who are like burnt out um, and have resentment. Um, so their actions aren't necessarily matching um yeah what they're wanting to get out of life so um i think for high for for those people um if you kind of re-examine yeah everything that you are investing in um and if if it is your job um, I think that we want some sort of outcome of to our goal in life. Otherwise it's really defeating. Um, 
And so some people want like promotions and like other people want, feel like they're not getting paid enough. And so um, I, I think that those are, if they're not seen in their organization, um, if they're, you know, working too, too much that they don't feel comfortable with, that can really start um, making burnout happen. Um, and so, yeah, when you talk about like external factors, yeah, kind of getting back to like, wait, why am I doing this? Um, who, who am I attached to that I'm, that I'm doing all this for as well? Um, yeah, I mean, I can say when I was working in the hospital, I was, uh, you know, director of a unit and was working my way uh, higher in the professional ranks, I would start picking up weeks that I was off, I would be picking those weeks up to start working, you know, because I felt there was a need, because my administration was saying that we need some help. So I'd be like, okay, let me jump in there and, you know, help out the team and doing this over years, there'd be weeks or months that would go by, I would just work every single day, you know, and um, they came to a point where I was like, didn't, feel that I was being appreciated at the level that I was giving back to that's the organization. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized, and I remember this really clearly going to the you know administration and asking for like a raise, saying that I'm taking care of this, uh, you know, very difficult population, which was a liver failure population, um, and doing it at a very high level. And we were with the best liver transplant uh, center, you know, in the world. And obviously, you know, there's a big, big team for that, that, that accounts for that. I'm very blessed to be a part of that team. However, there was a side of the medicine aspect where I felt like, you know, we needed more resources and wasn't getting that. So all these things start happening at your job. And I, I realized that, uh, burnout started to quickly come upon me and the high achiever that I was I didn't recognize my own physical or mental ailments that were occurring because I kept pushing and pushing and pushing and more and more let me do more I need to prove myself to who right like <laughs> what was I doing all that for and right uh, and you're sacrificing all of your time um right. Yeah, for kind of this idea of like getting approval. Right. You know? And, and um, getting to some higher status in that community. When status, it would have yeah, so that means a lot. When I should have just set up some boundaries and been like, well, no, I'm not gonna work that week that I'm off. I'm sorry. Um, it's I want to spend that time recovering and spending time with my family you know, and doing those types of things, I just, I felt bad, right? Like, I just didn't feel like I felt like I was letting them down if I was doing that. I mean, that's just, and I feel like a lot of people probably feel that, right? That are in that mentality, um, that they're overly working to compensate for I'm not sure what, but it's, it, it, it's a very draining process when you're not having any boundaries. And it leads yeah. to crashing and burning. I think another thing is, um, yeah, just not feeling, not feeling good enough. So you want to, you know, perform. Um, so a lot of high, high achievers are like, okay, yeah, if I get that next promotion, then, you know, I'll really be somebody and I'll really be valuable. Um, and then, yeah. And then we make all these sacrifices, um, in order to get that one. That's not actually true. You know, um, all people have the same respect and value. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like what you learned um, from your from your background, then yeah, you're right. going to keep on carrying that out even in work. Right. So it's important, I would say, for those who are listening to uh, when it comes to work boundaries, it's to understand, what, first of all, who you are, what your values are, where you want to go. And are you having that fulfillment in your current occupation or your current job status, you know, you shouldn't feel like you're constantly feeling underappreciated. And if you are, then that's something that you need to kind of, I feel, confront with your upper levels. And if you feel like uh, there it's time to go a separate path, then 
as hard as it is, it's something that you need to do. Otherwise, that resentment will build up. You, you shouldn't feel like you're in the cyclical pattern of having to work, work. I need to do more work to prove that I'm good enough for this job or promotion when there's something else that's out there and you must trust that that your time there is done, you know? Uh, and, and so a lot of times that can be difficult, but when we trust our intuition, like that's what I did, I realized that there is something more out there and it becomes really empowering and fulfilling, you know, to pursue that. Yeah. Um, I think that when we get really clear on what, what we're wanting out of the, out of all these sacrifices that we're making, we can, it empowers us to communicate it too, right. that it's really important. Yeah. To go to your boss or say like, okay, I'm doing all of this. What does that mean for me? What's, you know, what, what is the result? Is it a promotion? Is it a raise? Cause that's what I want at the end of the day, or, um, I want to be recognized. And so if I do all of this, does that mean that, you know, and actually like clearly state like, this is why, you know, I'm doing everything. And can you agree to that? Um, and so, and then you, and then you can know, or at least you can make a good risk judgment um, if it's uncertain and say, okay, I'm still gonna, you know, put effort in this, even if I don't know. Yeah. Communication is, is super important. I feel oftentimes, and I, me included, I was terrible in communication for such a long period. I just let things drive by. I would let them gloss over me and not get clear answers. And because of that, it just leads to more negative self-talk. And, and so I, I think you're right. Communication is very, very important. Now, you know, speaking about, uh, you know, a little bit more delving into the people pleasers. Now, oftentimes they're not really communicating what's really going on inside them. All they're communicating, I feel, is yes, I can do that. Yes, I'll help you, right? There is not an authentic communication that's going on and they have a real big issue of saying no. So with this subtype of individuals, you know, uh, what can they do to say no, <laughs> right? Because it seems like such an easy thing to say. It's like a two letter word, no, right? But it, when confronted with situations when somebody is like begging for your help, yet you know you have to get up at a certain time in the morning to get to work and that by doing this, right, you know, it's going to throw your whole schedule off and you barely know the person, but you don't want to be mean, right? So how do these individuals go about empowering themselves, advocating for themselves? Because it's really hard. It's not going to be easy, that's for sure, to change like on a flip, but how can how can they start? Yeah. So they're, they're giving a lot of their time. There's kind of like a give and take, um, mentality or, or give to take, um, of like, if I do this, then you're going to like me. If I do this, you're not going to be disappointed in me. Um, you're going to approve of me. Um, and you know, for some people that it, it is worth it to do that. Um, and so that's, but then, you know, you come to the point where, yeah, back to the limitations again. Um, and so I think it's not that I'm just saying, like, just say no um, to requests, but where there's kind of like a tension of you can't do it all the time. Um, and, um, I, I think we're, we're humans. And so having boundaries is kind of accepting that and kind of not having that level of control over the outcomes, um, that, okay, I can't, I can't fulfill every request, um, and being okay with disappointing people. Um, you know, 
um, site. You know, I, I agree there. That's a yeah. very, you, you have to be okay with, you know, letting somebody down. But, you know, if you are firm with your conviction about, hey, I'm unfortunately, I cannot help you with this because I have this going on, mm -hmm. then, you know, if that person still in some sort of way, you know, gets mad at you, you understand that that person is not really getting mad at you. There, there's a projection that's usually going on, right? That they, they need this help. They're very vulnerable, whatever the help is that, that they need. Um, and, and so it shouldn't be something that is a negative reaction by you saying no to that individual. It should be more of an understanding. And if there's not an understanding, then there's something that's being projected at you. And it's about you understanding that this is not your energy. This is coming from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and disappointment like happens all the time. Like the closer that you get to someone, they're going to let you down. It's like, man, I thought that you could do that or like for me, you know? And so it is, that's an okay thing for you to feel that someone lets you down and it's okay for them to feel. Um, but yeah, that then, you know, they have to then reorient their life. Um, take your boundary and say, okay, I need help from someone else, or I need to figure out how to do this for myself. Like they have to figure it out. Um, if you, if you can't, you know, right. You know, and I've realized because I did have some people pleasing in me. I, I did like to spend a lot of time with my friends. And anytime somebody wanted to go out, they knew, hey, let's hit up Nick. You know, he's definitely trying to go out and have a good time. Right. And so <laughs> what that ended up doing was uh, every day and night, I felt like I was going out. Right. And I and then <laughs> I was always tired and drained. But I had sometimes there was a period where I had a difficult time saying no. But, you know. I realized that gained me a lot of fake friends, I would say, because I feel like to be liked, it's not the same as being loved, you know, and not saying that I didn't have a lot of love in my life, but I feel like when your purpose, if you're just trying to be liked and you're saying yes to all these people because you want to feel like you're being there for uh, them, oftentimes you're neglecting a certain group of people or family or whatever have you, maybe to giving them your full undivided attention because when you're having so many different uh you know engagements that you're requiring yourself to go to it's hard to show up for everybody right and you'll leave a lot more of a disappointed path uh, when you just like want to be liked and try to say yes to everything rather than you focusing on the people that connect with you and resonate with you like your soul tribe of people being there for them and that's usually you know a group of like five or ten people compared to a group of like 30 people right and, and if people are getting triggered by you saying no and because you know change is gonna cause a lot of you know uh, angst amongst your friends and your family like yo what are you doing like uh, you said no to me you know like it can oftentimes i'm sure you see it anger straight vicious anger can come out of people all of a sudden mm -hmm. like, why is that happening it doesn't make sense it, that reaction should not be happening from you just saying no right like and then understand that no and their reaction is it, they have some deep rooted issues that they're either trying to fill with the void that you are giving them right but it's not up to you to save everybody or be there for every single body it's humanly impossible and so um just learning to say no just makes your life just so much better you know now when someone calls me and they're like eh, they're in town for like a bachelor party and i'm like okay cool uh no i'm sorry i'm busy uh this weekend i feel so good at the end of that weekend like that i rested you know because it just say it was a friend that I barely knew, but they knew I live in New Orleans, right? And then, you know, it's kind of one of those things or before in the past, I think, oh, yeah, let's go Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? But I would die on like Monday, you know, <laughs> can't. <laughs> right. I know.
Uh, yeah, especially as I get older, I can't, uh, right, can't do right. that as much. But um, yeah, so there's this process for people pleaser that once they learn boundaries and they start saying no, they're like, yes, I'm going to say no to everything. And it feels so freeing, you know, because um, they were doing all their yeses out of obligations. But it's this really beautiful um transformation I think when they can you know so so they wall up they say no to everything do another life reevaluation and then they start investing out of love and like choosing how they make their sacrifices because you still want that interdependency mm-hmm. between two people and there is you know give and take and sharing and And that's how you have friends and things like that. Um, But yeah, once you're you're like, okay, yeah, this is, or you start figuring out your values. Okay, yeah, this is what I'm going going to invest in. I am going to do this volunteer thing. I'm not going to do this one, you know, and then they can really, um, it's it's out of love and it's out of choice. And that's, um, you know, they get so much more from that. Yeah, so much. And, and, and it's yeah. true. It's like when you say no, what you're doing is not spending that your energy uh, with that particular situation currently. You are reinvesting that energy into yourself because mm-hmm. you're resting or you are doing something for yourself, which will only make you uh, be able to show up for even for that person or for others in such a more meaningful way. Right. right. Like that's it's, it's absolutely aligned with you. Yeah. It's so authentic. Yeah. It's great. It's, 10 out of 10. Yeah. 10. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I well, it's such a beautiful, like it's it's magic, you know, what really occurs when you start setting up these boundaries or you know, uh, these saying no. Um n- you're saying it in order to love yourself a little more, to pour into yourself. So we can show ourselves to the world in the most authentic, loving way possible. And those that are around that type of energy and have that type of friendship with an individual who's like that, Mm -hmm. they'll be very blessed, you know, because you will know that that person is there for you uh, wholeheartedly. And it's not like they're in and out of your life or Mm-hmm. they're there but they're really mentally not there because they're thinking about something else right and, and so um, or resenting you yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. you know mm-hmm. uh, a lot oftentimes I, you know when i would go out or say yes to things i didn't want to be there right yeah. how many people listening right now have said yes to going to places and then just absolutely hated being there in fact it just made you more angry and it caused some sort of fight to occur that day with for you or you to go out and indulge in activities that you normally wouldn't do but it was like a way for you to release right so there's so much that occurs when you don't listen to what your body is telling you what your mind is telling you in terms of hey i'm really tired i don't need to say yes to this person or every person I need to say yes to myself. Mm-hmm. All right. So, you know, as you know, this is just such beautiful conversation. You know, I I, I feel like I've learned so much and I, I'm hoping everyone out there has learned a lot. And, you know, I think a lot of people at some point of their life that are listening have either people pleased or they are high achievers and, you know, they're pushing themselves uh, to continue to attain these goals, and which are totally fine. In, in fact, again, it's about how are we creating balance with that, you know, level of achievement that we're, you know, that we're hoping to attain. Because oftentimes there are periods where you're just focused on that one goal or, or ambition that your family gets left out, that your children get left out, that your friends get neglected. What do you say to those, Morgan? Because that often happens. Like, how do you bring that back, or how do you bring them back to have a little bit more of a balance? Because naturally, some of those professions require a lot more time. 
Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, we're just caught in systems that require more of us and are more demanding. And then we have to um, make more sacrifices for that. And you have to decide if it's worth it, I think, you know, worth it to your family, um, at least for that phase. Um, yeah, but if if you don't, if you don't think it's worth it, then yeah, how can you make some changes um, in your life? Um, it's all yeah. balance. It's all balance. And I, I'm much better at recognizing that now that, hey, back then when I was uh, working nonstop 42 days in a row, I, I didn't realize how disconnected I'd gotten from my family and some of my friends in that time period. But now, uh, and then when you are off balance like that, it, your mind is very off balance. And then you use your time off in unproductive ways. Uh, oftentimes, you know, you're getting yourself more tired because you're going on these trips and you want to have this release. And there's just so much that goes on that your body has to re-regulate itself and causes a lot of issues uh, towards our mental wellness. So I just love like balance. Like it, it, there are points in life you're going to have to push forward with your career aspect, but Hey, maybe balance that with, you know, if you have a family, letting them know, like, Hey, communicating with them, like, I'm going to be a little bit more busier this month. We have this going on. It's a big project. I really need to get this promotion, but you know what? Uh, I love you guys. We're going to do FaceTime. I'm going to be at home, you know, something along those lines to help those areas of your life that are going to be neglected. Uh, it, it's about knowing that there's going to be some neglect in that, in an area of your life. And how can you try to support that? as best as you can. And usually communication is the number one way to do that. So um, I, I, you know, I resonate totally with this and, and this has been a, you know, a really wonderful podcast. And I know our listeners and audience has really learned something here today. If there is some takeaway that you would want our, uh, you know, listeners to have our high achievers and our people pleasers, you know, what would that be? Yeah, I think um I think that if they could pick a person in their life that they feel like they're overextending um or maybe it is work, that's the person um where they're overextending um and making a lot of sacrifices for like ask yourself what is um the desired outcome? that I want? Like, is it their approval? Is it for them to like me? Am I wanting a promotion? Am I wanting some status here? Um, and if it is, if that is something that you want, um, have that conversation with them. Um, like, Hey, I'm, I'm doing this because I want you to like me, you know? Um, right. And, and maybe they're like, oh, you don't have to do that. You know, like I, I like you, you know, um, or yeah, if it's, if it's at work, you know, they can say like, yes, you're on the, you're on the right track. We do have plans for you, you know, um, but making it outspoken, um, so that you can realign your life if it's not what you want, you know, if you're not going to get, um, get that. Yeah. All right. I love that. Thank you for tuning into the Alliance podcast, where we inspire a world of wellness and philanthropy. For more resources and to stay connected to Alinus and the Alinus app release, make sure to check out our website at www.alinusworld.com. Make sure to also check out our social media pages on TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube with the handle at Alinus World. And for more resources and services that Morgan provides, make sure to check her website out at www.morganhancockmft.com. And we'll have some more resources in the caption below. Until we meet again, stay aligned, stay connected, and stay anchored into the power of unconditional love. Namaste. Namaste.